So good morning, everybody. Um, I work for the European Commission, uh, the Directorate General for Regional and Urban Policy. And what I will try to concentrate on uh, in these 18 minutes max is uh, what can the EU do or what should the EU do about uh, housing and in particular affordable housing and how does it link to a new policy initiative that we are working together very closely with member states and cities which is called the EU Urban Agenda. Good. I think like most of you in the room are much better experts and much more, have much more in that knowledge on the housing situation than I am. But from the little I, I know and read, I understood that uh, today we are facing a very serious situation in the area of affordable housing because, in fact, we have a triple squeeze. We have a squeeze on the supply side. We have heard a lot about this regarding costs. Uh, there is not enough construction going. Uh, pressure on the construction is increasing because the quality demands are uh, ever higher. Uh, on the demand side, because due to the crisis and uh, maybe some other factors, the, the degree of poverty is unfortunately growing in Europe and there's some certain uh, parts of the population of the middle class are, are sliding uh, down and maybe potentially into poverty. So therefore they have less income, less possibility to afford uh, housing. And plus, because of the pressures on the financial system, they have also more difficulty to, to access uh, financing. And at the same time, the policy response, uh, the possibilities for policy response are also uh, decreasing and more limited because all the European countries face uh, very severe budgetary pressures. They have to cut uh, expenditure and uh, especially social expenditure. Um, so that, uh, that leads to a very uh, difficult uh, trap situation. And what does the, the EU do in that situation? Well, you know very well that the EU doesn't have a housing policy as such. It is, it is not an EU competence. Uh, that said, there are lots of um, elements and lots of legislations and policies that very heavily influence the developments uh, in affordable housing. And I just uh, flagged a few of them that uh, are the most frequently uh, mentioned and also have the, probably the highest impact. So we have the European semester where the, um, uh, the countries are under scrutiny uh, over their spending and their budgets and also the member states uh, have have adopted uh, country-specific recommendations regarding uh, housing issues, quite a few of them actually. Um, and all of this from a liberalization perspective, or most of it from a liberalization perspective. On the state aid side, we again uh, face certain problems, uh, bureaucratic burdens on developers and also discussions about who is entitled to this type of um, um, affordable housing, legislation on energy, energy efficiency directive and the standards for, um, for renovation. This has obviously a strong impact, legislation on public procurement, services of general interest, so all of these have a very strong impact. And on the, on the funding side, of course, the, um, the EU is providing significant uh, funding. I will talk about it in a second. But overall, uh, the general sentiment is that there is no coherent EU policy response to affordable housing because the precedence is always is, is the budgetary considerations at the moment. Um, now, in terms of funding, I think the picture is somewhat better. Uh, at least in the ongoing programming period, the available funds for uh, housing have increased very significantly. Uh, in the, for the European Regional F Development Fund, the funding related to housing can be accessed via energy efficiency, renovations, uh, via social infrastructure and social investment and urban regeneration. So there are, there are very different ways to go into housing, although housing investments must always respect the thematic objectives and the in investment priorities that, that the programs uh, support. And in this framework, uh, we are providing uh, 5.4 billion euros for this period for uh, energy efficiency, 
um, renovation and about 1.4 billion on, on development, housing development, and uh, most of it uh, pro obviously on social housing. And this figure actually is the amount of, of um, funds from the Regional Development Fund, but it also um, has a very big leverage, especially in energy efficiency, where the, the way of financing will be very often not through grants, but through financial instruments, through loans, interest, subsidies, guarantees, etc. Um, the European Social Fund also plays an important role. Um, we know less about the European Fund for Strategic Investment in terms of very concrete projects. It's starting up and we are hopeful that uh, many of the investments funded will ease the situation. And the European Investment Bank, which provides a very significant loan and other financial instrument uh, funding to, to housing investments. Um, one of our concerns is how we fund housing, because there are several other policies that, um, that we would like to pursue, and if we do housing investments in the wrong way, it can actually have a negative impact on social inclusion and, and other elements. So such uh, issues, for example, desegregation. So we would like to see uh, segregated communities decrease or being eliminated. So we are very careful, we should be very careful and all of those doing investments in segregated areas should be very careful not to exacerbate this situation and not to, um, not to maintain this situation. Um, then the question of migrants and refugees. From the housing perspective there are many, many issues but again when we do housing investments, they are there for, a long, for the long run. So again, again, a word of caution that if we put the migrants again into ghettos or into separated quarters, I think uh, we all see in the past days where this, where this leads to. So this also needs very careful consideration. Another aspect is that although now it's a very big emergency situation and we talk a lot about creating fast and temporary solutions for, for refugees, looking at the number, there is a serious risk that these temporary solutions, intended temporary solutions, turn into something more permanent and then create the tensions that I was just talking about. Another uh, element is uh, community-based community living. So again, um, to take people out of institutions, people with specific needs, either because of disability or because of age or because of uh, uh, other situations and to provide them accommodation inside the, the community in uh, family-based uh, living situation. Uh, social inclusion, so uh, how to, this is a, of course a wider topic, uh, housing should also be seen as an element in improving people's chances of, of getting a job and being more integrated in their, in their community in general. And uh, last but not least, uh, urban planning and development should always be uh, taken into account. So all of this lead to the to the conclusion that housing is of course one of these issues that have a huge uh, integrated uh, aspect. So we can only do housing investment in a very integrated and so true way. It's not as easy as going and building something somewhere. Um, also with regards to how we provide the funding, there are some issues and um, although now the program is set for until 2020, maybe there is a scope of, of still refining certain elements of, uh, of this approach. Uh, one such question is the ener uh, investments in energy efficiency, which is obviously very important. We have uh, climate-related uh, targets which we want to achieve and energy efficiency in housing is one of the key areas in this. However, the question is uh, to what extent, to what degree and, th and through what means we are pushing this energy efficiency investment in a way that also doesn't hamper the the affordability and the supply of, of um, housing. Um, the other question is uh, how much do we push financial instruments and how do we balance it with, with uh, grants? Um, obviously for those investments that have a, a full return over a reasonable period, the most logical is to use financial instruments, but 
Um, there are varying opinions whether they are really bringing the returns to the level that is expected, and then it is, this uh, has also um, can create also adverse um, consequences. And the issue of ownership, which is very difficult, I, I'm not sure I know what to do with it, but when we were discussing about investments in housing, be it energy efficient, especially in the energy efficiency context, the ownership issue always comes up because typically we're talking about multi-apartment buildings with mixed ownership and then the, the, it's very, very difficult to organize the, the investments. Uh, and then added to this, uh, now moving a little bit on to the urban area, I think there is an increased understanding that the housing issue and the affordable housing issue in particular is very much an urban question, not exclusively, but to a very, very large degree. And cities face uh, in particular uh, specific pressures related to uh, providing uh, housing either because their population is growing or exploding or because they are in decline and they face, again, different types of pressure. We know that the household structure has changed radically over the last decades. We have much more households, smaller households. We have the pressure of the migration. We have the pressures uh, from a far from ideal tenure structure and housing stock. Um, we face the issues of urban poverty and homelessness. We face the issue that uh, Housing is not necessarily where the jobs are, so the, and beyond that, of course, for the improving the, the poverty situation and the income situation, the jobs are uh, key aspects, and cities have a role to play in this. Then the issue of urban sprawl, which we've heard about um, before, where uh, from an urban development perspective, it's a relatively harmful way of, of providing more housing and instead other policies should be pursued. And then the issue of, of segregated communities, among others, I'm sure you'll be able to mention them more. So what are we going to do about it? Even though I said that uh, housing is not an EU competence, uh, we are working very much together with the member state and specifically with the upcoming Dutch presidency to create a process where we have a discussion, a multi-level discussion shared by the commission, the member states, cities, NGOs, experts uh, that, can, um, that can lead to concrete solutions with concrete results. And what do we want to do? We want to involve the cities better in EU policy making and we also want to mobilize cities uh, to implement better EU and national policies. And for this aim, um, there will be action, action plans, so we will create together action plans and implement those on a number of priority themes, I'll show you in a moment. And we will do it through partnerships where the Commission, Member States, cities, NGOs, etc. will work together uh, to come up with these, uh, with these action plans. And in addition to this, we are also in the Commission pursuing other elements such as uh, an improved use of urban and territorial impact assessment, better developing better urban data and knowledge um, 